My name is Deion Davis. I attend Stockton University. I am a communications major. Uh, I live in Atlantic City. What else? I was formerly on Student Senate. I'm involved in UBSS. I was a part of the Champions of Youth program when I lived in Atlantic City. My name is Cristian Moreno Rodriguez. I'm 22 years old and I'm a recent graduate of Stockton University, class of 2017. You know, I interned for my local city council. I interned for the late great Center of Whalen. I interned for places all throughout Atlantic City. And you know, that actually afforded me the opportunity where I am now, interning for uh, Congressman Raul Grijalva uh, of the Arizona 3rd District and co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Well, I was born and raised in Atlantic City. I went to uh, elementary school up to fifth grade um, in Atlantic City. And then I moved away for five years and I came back. During the time I grew up, communities were communities. In the community, everybody was responsible for rearing you. I'm 23, I currently go to Stockton and I'm trying to become a psychologist. I wanna open my own private practice and I've always felt like mental health is a thing that like in my community isn't really addressed. So I wanted to open up like ideally like a community health center kind of thing. I'm born and raised right here in Lang City, New Jersey. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're sitting right in the neighborhood where I grew up on Drexel Place in the Stanley Holmes Village. Uh, graduated from Lang City High School in 2003, went off to college, uh, graduated from Stockton in 2008, and then got into education. That's where I'm at now, uh, teaching almost 10 years. I don't know, Atlantic City kids are just rough. I love them. We're all rough, but like, it's good that we have that tough skin because once we get out into the world, a lot of things don't, well, I, I find that a lot of things don't really phase me. I lived in Pleasantville, I moved to Galloway, and then I came to Atlantic City. Once I came to Atlantic City, I was a proper talking uh, young man, and they were like, who are you? But like, they were, they were so, like, they loved me. But they like, they really toughened me up because like, I, I felt like I, I was like really fragile, like my ego was fragile. I was like, I was like really quiet and I feel like them roughing me up and them like, uh, like getting me to be like a little tougher and like really speak up for myself and not let, not be passive. I feel like that's, that's an excellent trait that I, I gained from Atlantic City. The place where we're sitting at at the moment, you know, was a very large Hispanic community that was oftentimes undocumented. And so, you know, growing up, you're not really cognizant of that fact that the people around you, you know, are, are in danger at all times. But when I was in the sixth grade, my mom sat me and my old, older brother down. She explained how she came to this country as well, how she and my father came to this country, how they had to cross the desert, you know, the rivers, the creeks, walk, run, sprint for three days on end, very little water, very little nourishment. She explained to me the deal they had to make with the coyote. She explained to me the truck that they were stowed away in. The, the thing that scared me most about my mom's story when she, when, she, when she told us what happened was that they were actually captured by Border, border Patrol in her first attempt. And they were processed through the system and they had to return to Mexico and cross once again. So they didn't make that trip once, they made it twice. And that fear always stuck with me. And being ba raised by the community, the, the fear was at large. And you know, to me, that's when I truly woke up. In the sixth grade, I knew I wanted to become an immigration attorney. In the sixth grade, I knew that there were people around me that needed my help, that needed help in general. And if I, if I as an Atlantic City citizen can do anything to help, that, that would be my mission in life. It was such a big deal in elementary school to take instrumental music lessons, so I, I, I picked the trombone at, in fourth grade. And so I found myself um, a lover of um, music. And so um, I explored that for a while, uh, probably I think until 11th grade. Um, so, so music was what I enjoyed. And also I always enjoyed school, so I always enjoyed learning and um, and I always wanted to be a teacher from the time that I went to kindergarten. I wanted to be a teacher. And that never changed uh, throughout, um, throughout my, ex my education experience. 
when I was in AC, I had my, a weird little group because I saw like all those things. Like you had your sports kids on various programs. And I had friends who were in there, especially once I got into Atlantic City High School. Like I have friends on the football team who played basketball. I knew half the cross country and track team, but that was never really my thing. I was like a weird hodgepodge of a bunch of different groups. Like I play instruments, so I was cool with the music kids, but. I love comic books, so the nerd kids, were, me and the nerds were like this, and, but then I also just have the things from being like a black man growing up in the city. I have certain shared experiences and cultural things, so that group of people in the community I resonated with as well, just from shared life experiences. I was the one kid in school who was showing up and when you check their iPod, it's like, why do you have show tunes and Metallica here? Like, I stood out a little bit. Uh, singing was my thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was, <laughs> when I was young, a friend of mine, um, we started a little music group, and we called it Boys to Boys. <laughs> you know, a little spinoff of Boys to Men. The biggest thing it was, that, was that it provided an outlet for me to be creative. And then in addition to that, it provided me something positive to do to stay off the streets. Um, I never really was a street kid. You know, I was kind of, and I wasn't really good at sports. You know, so I didn't have the basketball and the football to go to. And I wasn't really a, a child that liked to, you know, of course I got into some trouble, but no big time trouble and hanging out and doing crazy things. And having that avenue through the theater was an, an outlet for me for a child who, you know, was different, I guess. Throughout the school day, I actually played music to keep the children relaxed. And I exposed them to different types of music. So, um, you know, this year, our theme was back to Africa. So I played a lot of, I played African radio on Pandora and I exposed them to different music. And within a couple of months, they're singing along and they know the songs. And it seemed a little weird for them at first because it was something different. But by the end of the school year, it was just natural. When I was in middle school, this is where I played football at. Uh, a lot of my coaches, like well, all of my coaches, basically, they always told us that football was uh, it's life. And I didn't really like, I didn't really believe them when like they were saying it to me. I was like, ah, oh, they just like, they're just talking old people always saying crazy stuff. But like, it really is, it really is life. For example, you have the referees. Every game we always say, oh my God, the referees are cheating us, they're cheating us. But you'll have people that have like the power to do whatever they'll have this elusive power over you but it's up to you to define your success how hard you work and if i'm scoring touchdown after touchdown after touchdown they can call them back but i'm gonna just score another touchdown if we if we've been working in practice if we've been practicing the way that we should be and we're executing our plays there's nothing that anybody outside of your team can do to stop you. If you're practicing, if you're preparing the right way, there's nothing that, that can stop you. And I find that to be true in college. If I don't prepare for a test, I'm not gonna do well. If I don't prepare for a speech that I have to give, I'm not gonna execute it the way I could have. And there's so many missed opportunities when you don't prepare. So, I, I finally understand what Coach Kelly, Coach Spud, uh, Coach Gordon, all my coaches were saying to me, like when they said, football is life. I would not be who I am with, if it were not for the people of Atlantic City. Um, and things really picked up at Atlantic City High School. And that was such a great, and it still is such a great place of education if you have, if you are afforded those avenues of opportunity, if you, you know, if you talk to the teachers and, you know, you do well in school and stuff like that, they reciprocate everything. Um, so, you know, my freshman year, I was able to, you know, just start learning the basics when I say high school and do well in school. I got into sports. I was, you know, I did soccer, crew, uh, my freshman year, and then I actually became a varsity runner for Lang City High School. I ran the last three years of my high school career under coach Timothy O'Donnell. And that's where I really found myself with running. Um, I, you know, towards the end, I was running. I was captain of the team, 
So, you know, that really influenced me a lot. And it gave me some leadership qualities that I was able to look into. When I went to kindergarten, just having this fascination for learning and that knowing that teachers were a part of, you know, learning. And so um, I, I just saw myself in that capacity. And um, of course, when I was in elementary school, there were um, most of the teachers were women. And so, um, and then yet um, in the upper grades, particularly in the lower grades, and then there were a few men in the um, upper grades. So when I realized that a man could be a teacher, I was like, okay, that's, that's what I want to do. To see an African-American male standing before, you know, them in the classroom is really significant given, you know, the narrative um, in this country about African-American men and, 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 and the narrative about success or the lack of success um, among African-American men. So it's really important because all you know often people say well you're a role model for you know african-american um, students and I, and I say I, I just hope I'm a role model for all students everyone deals with struggle and adversity in their own way and, but everyone experiences it at some point in their life you kind of have to learn how to sort that out and figure it out for yourself and for me it was something that my family definitely taught me how to deal with in their own unique ways like I'll never forget my mom got me a cell phone because I always wanted one. Growing up, everyone was starting to get one. That was like the whole tech thing. And she was like, oh, I'll get you a phone, but you have to pay the bill yourself. Well, okay, that's a challenge, but okay. By the way, caveat, you're not allowed to get a job. You're in high school, you gotta focus on your grades. Well, okay, then you put a wrench in my plan. How am I gonna figure this out? I have to pay the bill, but I can't get a job. So I was like, okay, I'll make one. I knew I was good at computers from all my tech classes at, at the high school, so made, I used my computer knowledge to make a website, started my own little tech consulting in the city for people who worked at the school, uh, teachers, their families, and from there it kind of branched out and became like a community thing. Definitely helped me realize that like, no matter, when the chips are down, I can find a way to make it through and like, just from creativity and determination when you have to. That phone bill was always paid. <laughs> At the school that we're trying to open up, the Frederick Douglass Charter School for Boys, one of the biggest things um, that we're gonna do is expose our young men to different fields. You know, they, you know, they just think that, you know, I could be a basketball player or a football player or, you know, we wanna show them that there's a lot of things that you can do where you can make a good living to take care of your family and still also be about the community. You know, a lot of the ones, a lot of the ones who do make it in Atlantic City or out of Atlantic City, they, don't, they never come back. And we want to we want to kind of change that dynamic and, and, and help the youngsters understand that even if you do make it, a part of making it is coming back and helping someone else make it. It's just knowing that you're good enough. Like, don't let anybody say, oh, you from the hood, you from, you from AC, like, AC is a terrible place. AC is not bad at all. It is filled with different opportunities and different adventures. And all you have to do is seek them out. Stay engaged in your community, stay engaged in your education, and stay engaged in life. Your parents risked their entire life to come to this country, to come to this city. Your parents risked it all. Your parents gave up their own future in their country to come here for a better place for you. And with that knowledge, I couldn't let them down. I couldn't, I couldn't not succeed. I couldn't not try to succeed. With that knowledge, as a citizen, as a resident or whatever, I had to do everything in my power to not just help my parents when I could, but to help my community. And whether that's getting an education, whether that's being a model citizen, whether that's just doing the right things at the end of the day, if I could do it, I, I would. And for me, going to Stockton University is one of the best choices I made. You know, it made my parents so proud as a first generation student to come. Whatever your goal is, whatever your dream in life is, pursue it. And don't ever let anybody 
take it away from you, don't let anybody tell you no. And in fact, I always tell students, you know, even applying to college, and they say, well, you know, I don't, my grades are so bad, I don't think I'll get into, say, Stockton. I said, well, you can apply and let the admission person tell you no. Let somebody else tell you no. Never tell yourself no. Don't count yourself out. And so whatever your goal is, be persistent. And also whatever you want to be in life, um, in terms of a career, be the best that you can be at it. Um, and unfortunately, and you know this, being African American, we're always, you know, we're always under observation. So there are things that people already come with, you know, thoughts about us that that people already have based on what we, you know, how we look. So you need to dispel that in, in every at every cost. Once I was put in a situation where there was opportunity and there was something I could do, I immediately seized it. But I know for me, there was a point where I didn't think there was that, or I, I didn't think anyone would give me that opportunity or that chance. So it's for me, I think it's about providing for people something that they don't see for themselves letting them have a chance to not show others, but show themselves that they can do. Because that's what got me to where I am. Being put in a situation where I have to show I can do something. And once I show I can do something, as I said before, once you do it, you can't say you can't. Um, the first thing I would encourage them to do is to identify their purpose and their gifts and talents. Um, every child is born with one, um, some even more than one. Identify what that is and then that will help steer you towards your passion. Your passion will keep you focused on your mission and what you want to achieve. And understand that Atlantic City, being born and raised in Atlantic City, it builds character. And it's actually one of the things that I, that I feel as though my sons have missed out with the most is with not being born in Atlantic City or being raised in Atlantic City. Um, you know, there's certain things that they don't have that I can't teach them on how to navigate through life. And once you learn those things and you experience those things, there's nothing that anyone can take away from you. And continue to accumulate skills and continue to build a great character and you can go far.